so thankful to have with us uh, Dr. Tom Lancaster. He has served the Lord in military ministry and continues to do so as a military director with BIMI. He pastored in 1992 and until just a couple years ago in Mannheim, Germany, outside one of our bases there, and hundreds and thousands of military personnel attended his church in that ministry, and we're very thankful for the opportunity to have him preach today. Our time is limited, but it's very important that we hear from God's word, and I want him to come at this time. We'll be preaching this morning and again tonight, but tonight, this morning, I want you to listen with attentiveness from God's word and his spirit uh, from our guest speaker today. Dr. Lancaster, you come, would you please? Bless you. Oh, what a, what a thrill it is to be here. I'll try to express my appreciation more tonight uh, we are involved in military missions, and I go everywhere I can trying to hook someone that would say, yes, I'll go. I'll go and help our military. I didn't know that they were going to be here, but a couple who has recently received orders from their commander-in-chief to deploy to Germany. He's a former military man, and he and his wife and family are now moving to Germany to serve as military missionaries. Brother Ms. Wolf, would you stand up, please? God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is uh, a humbling um, thing to be in the presence of these men and women that have served so valiantly. And then to hear just a fraction of how Brother Vogel uh, served there. And I don't say this uh, uh, sympathetically or lightly. I am humbled to be here. And I thank the Lord for the invitation for this high honor that your pastor has given me. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, please, to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. 1 Chronicles chapter 12. And if you are able to stand to your feet at the reading of God's Word, uh, would you do that and let me read just a couple of verses 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 1. Now these are they that came to David, to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. And they were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Thank you, and you may be seated. Heavenly Father, would you be pleased, Lord, in helping me Lord, I don't have to remind you of everything that has been done in preparation of this service, not only for the Lord's Day, but to honor our brave men and women and their families, and even this great nation, Lord, that has supported our men and women as they have fought on many fields to preserve freedom. Lord, I thank you. And remember what Colin Powell said, that Americans have not fought for imperialism or to take over land. All they were looking for was enough ground to bury our dead. Dear God, I pray that you'll help me now. You know me, Lord. And Lord, I give myself to you the very little that I am, and I ask, O oh God, that you might please graciously use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I have entitled, for my own benefit, these two chapters, David's Veterans. And what God the Holy Spirit is doing through David is showing us these brave men that served with David in the wars. And I'll just mention a few things. Brother Vogel has painted the picture clearly for us in that one war. 57 million Americans have fought in its wars down through these years since the founding of our country. A million and a half Americans have died in wars that America has fought to preserve freedom. Uh, once again, Brother Vogel has said there can be discussion about the Vietnam War and other wars. But I do not believe that you could ever contradict the fact that our men went and our women went for two reasons. They went because they saw the cause and volunteered or they went because their country called them and they did their duty. David is honoring through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the veterans. We've been here today to honor some of the choicest citizens of our country our veterans. Let me just take a few moments to remind you of what happened here with David and his veterans. First of all, they were volunteers. The Bible says they came to David. Thank God for people that have answered the call. Thank God for people that have maybe even received an order from our government and they have gone and they have done their duty. They were volunteers. The Bible also tells us that they were men of valor. If you have your Bible open, you can look at verse 25 of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor. They were brave men. I, I could almost fear the, uh, feel the fear rising in my own self as I heard uh, Brother Vogel speak about that first engagement that he was involved in. My wife and I have had the privilege to stand at the cemetery of Omaha Beach in Normandy and look out across that, that sea there, that channel, English Channel, and remember on that June the 6th, those 175 allies, mostly Americans, came and unloaded there. It was said in one book that I read, while those men were nearing the beach in their boats, that one could speak to another and say, one of us is going to die today. And many did die. Many knew they were going to die. Many knew that they would be maimed. Many knew that they would face terror. But here's the thing that strikes me. In spite of all of that, they did it anyway. Thank God for the men and women of our country. No, they didn't want to go. No, they had an inkling of the hardships. No, they didn't want to leave their families. No, they didn't want to say goodbye to their children. But they just did it anyway. And I believe that we owe them our deepest appreciation Amen. and our deepest respect. They just did it anyway. And then the Bible also tells us that these men, verse 23, and these are they that, no, uh, uh, these are the, the numbers of the bands that were ready. May I suggest to you that America has got to continue to be diligent. There are many adversaries in many different places and we must be ready. We must be vigilant. Yes, there is safety as 
we build our strength and as our military might is strong. But they were not only ready, the Bible says in that same verse, they were, they were armed for war. They were trained. They were equipped. And they were ready to go to war. I, I love history and I love military history. And I lived in Germany for 20 years. And I actually lived in the city that my stepfather bombed in World War II. And one of my most beloved members was an elderly German woman who lived under that same bombing. And the thing that I most of the time came away with in talking to Germans who were veterans of World War II, they would begin to speak to me and I would say, what do you think about America? And almost without exception, some of them, uh, I remember one man, an American machine gunner, had shot his leg off. And another had been in an internment camp for years. But these German people who had served in World War II against America and had seen the outcome and had seen the love of the American people for freedom and liberty, here's what they would say, I love America. I love America. They were armed and they were ready for war. Um, one of our great generals said that the most formidable weapon that has ever been devised is an M1 rifle in the hands of a trained military man. In other words, what he was saying, yes, we can send our units. Yes, we can send our companies. Yes, we can send our battalions. But when it comes down to it, it's one man, one woman that stands on the line and exhibits bravery. And then look, if you will, please, at verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. They understood the time. They were facing some formidable enemies, one of which was the Philistines and other enemies. But the Bible says they understood the times. I hope and pray that you and I will understand the times. Yes, we are faced with battles. Oh, I don't think that, and I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to, Put a guilt trip on you. But please don't go to bed tonight without saying, Dear God, bless our troops that are in harm's way. Dear God, bless their wives. Bless their husbands. When the, men, I mean, when the ladies go to war, because that does happen. Bless the children. I hope you understand the times. And I hope you understand that if America is going to win this battle for freedom, we've got to be strong at home. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, God says, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. John F. Kennedy he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Somebody might say, where can I sign up? I'll tell you something else. Get right with God and live for God. Amen. Be a Christian in this world. Be a light in the midst of darkness. And then let me also suggest to you that they not only understood the times, but look at verse 33 of Zebulun, which went forth to battle expert in war with all the instruments of war. 50,000, listen to this, which could keep rank. In 1863, between the days of July the 1st and July the 4th, in the placid fields outside of a small town in Pennsylvania called Gettysburg, the armies of the North stood in array. The armies of the South were coming up from the South. 
And the plan was, if we can make it past Gettysburg, we can go all the way to Washington. There on a ridge that's been named Round Top, there on a ridge the federal troops were deployed. A lieutenant colonel from Maine, he had set out the war for a little while, but he said, I can no longer do it. He was a professor at a Bible college in Maine. And he came to Gettysburg with his troops. His commanding officer, uh, knowing his background and possibly wondering, is he going to fight? Is, is he going to fight? put him at what was thought to be the safest part of the battle on a little knoll called Little Round Top. The Confederate troops began to charge. They used that particular place as their focal point. The armies of the South said, if we can get around the flank, we can go all the way to Washington. The Confederates charged again and again and again. Finally, Joshua Chamberlain, Lieutenant Colonel Chamberlain, and his men ran out of ammunition. They began to throw rocks down the hill as the enemy troops were coming up. He said, fix bayonets. And they fixed bayonets, and then he did something unusual. He commanded a charge down the hill. The enemy troops turned around and began to run, and Joshua Chamberlain and his men came back in, to their positions. But here came the Southerners again. And I'm not here to refight the battle between the North and the South. I just appreciate bravery, and I appreciate the fact that our country won its freedom, and we are one country. I thank God for that. As Joshua Chamberlain stood, uh, saw the next charge coming, it was said, and it won him the Congressional Medal of Honor, but Joshua Chamberlain stood up with withering fire coming from down the hill, and he was heard saying as he walked up and down the line, Hold the line, men. Hold the line. Hold the line, men. I would say in my little old piddling voice today, America, hold the line. Don't give up our freedoms. Don't give up what we've stood for. Don't give up our foundation. Now to the rest of us, in a spiritual note, have you ever joined up? I never will forget when I went and joined up. I actually thought that I had to join up to get this uniform. I could have bought it at an army surplus store. <laughs> but, I, but I went and joined up. I remember the day that I joined up. And I, I, I don't mind telling you, when we sung the Star Spangled Banner just a few moments ago, I did what I've always done. I wept. I thought about my granddaddy who slogged his way across the Solomon Islands in World War II. I thought about my father who came ashore on Normandy five days after the, the landing there on Normandy. I thought about this man and others like him. But let me ask you this. Have you ever joined up? I'm talking about to be a Christian. If you want to make a mark on society, become a Christian. Be a godly man. Be a godly woman. Affect somebody one at a time. Raise some godly children. Now that will never be the case until you sign up. Until you become a born again child of God. I tell the story often. The knock on the door came at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. 
the man standing there, I invited him in. In just a few moments, he began to talk to me. It was about eight o'clock. If I'd have died at eight o'clock, I'd have died and gone straight to hell. He carried on some good conversation. If I had died at 10 minutes after eight, I would have died and gone to hell. But he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a New Testament and he said, may I show you from the Bible how you can be born again. And somewhere between 15 minutes after eight and 8.30, I got born again. My life got changed. My mother was a drunkard. My daddy was an alcoholic. I've been in jail numbers of times. But that experience changed my life. And I hope I have become a productive citizen after that. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you been born again? In this auspicious crowd that's here today, there is one that's here and we have not seen him. We've recognized him. He's been honored. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is in this building today. And he wants to save you today. If you will let him save you. And then let me admonish all of us. Let's get to work in the battle. Fighting sin. Winning people to Christ. Sticking with it. Holding the line. Did some of you used to serve on the front line, but now you've backed up? Holding the line. I went to the service where John Merriman, a corpsman, received the Silver Star. I heard the citation, how he had exhibited bravery on a particular night in Vietnam. And then I heard this statement. John Merriman went above and beyond the call of duty. Let's us go above and beyond the call of duty. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, will you please help us? Please, Lord. Speak to us, O oh God. How many in this room say, Brother Lancaster, beyond a shadow of a living doubt, I have signed up. I have been born again. I am a child of God. If I were to die right now, I know for sure I would go to heaven. I know it beyond a doubt. If that's a yes, raise your hand. God bless your sweethearts. God bless you. Thank you. And thank you for those of you that did not. Now you can be saved today. God loves you. And we love you. We do. We love you. How many in this room would say, Brother Lancaster, don't embarrass me or pick me out or call my name or do anything like that. But the bottom line is I really do want to be born again. I want to be saved. Will you just remember to pray for me? I see hands going up already. Amen. Others? Others? Preacher, I want to be saved. Pray for me. Anybody else? Anyone else? Don't miss it. How many Christians in this room right now would say, Brother Lancaster, I need to re-up. I've drifted away. I've gotten away from the battle. I've gotten away. I need to re-up today. Brother Lancaster, I, I need to get with it. I need to get with it. I need to start serving as a Christian, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Pray for me. Anybody like that? I see your hands. I see you. Father, help us now. God, give the pastor direction as he leads us. In Jesus' name, amen.